G'day and welcome back to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today what I'm going to be looking at is the ramp I've used to get on and off this vehicle with a small rover. It's a double hinged ramp, so let's have a look at it. A few people have asked me how on earth I went about building this, so I thought I would show it nice and quickly so that you can try and build something similar yourself. The way this ramp works is you've got a rotor down the bottom which is attached to the main grid. You've then got a nice long piece of ramp which then attaches to via a rotor part to a pair of rotors which are on their separate own grid. They are completely separate from any piece of the ramp. There's then another rotor part which attaches to the final piece of the ramp. And you can continue this design as long as you like at least until the rotors lose strength and the whole ramp just collapses because you've made it too big. You can also see that on the far side of the ramp there's another pair of rotors and that's because I've mirrored this design just so that it is symmetrical. That second pair of rotors is completely non-functional. They're just there for looks. They are switched off and do not provide any power to the function of this ramp at all. So let's go through the building process of this ramp so that it makes a bit more sense. What I've built here is a replica of what I have at the back of this large rover. There are some airtight hangar doors and that's the entrance to our hangar proper. But we need this ramp so that the wheeled vehicles inside can get in and out. So what we're going to be doing is placing our first rotor at the same height as these airtight hangar doors when they're in the open position so that we can drive straight up this ramp and inside. So let's open these up and we'll start with our first rotor. Our first rotor needs to be placed right here. You can either use an advanced rotor or you can use a standard rotor. I find that when I'm setting things up like this, it's quite handy to have advanced rotors because they have an access point on the back. But if you don't want that look, you can use a standard rotor and you can just go through the menu to find them yourselves, as I've done here. But for today, we're going to use advanced rotors. You want to place this just off to the side of where the airtight hangar doors are so that you're not driving on the rotor itself when you're trying to get up this ramp. You want the blast doors to completely cover this gap where the airtight hangar doors are. You can then also place another advanced rotor on the other side facing inward. Then we want to remove the advanced rotor head from that second rotor placing down blast door edges along until we get right up against that other rotor. So we'll need six of them. We can then place an advanced rotor part on the end of this line of blast door blocks, like so. If you go into this advanced rotor here, into its control panel, you'll be able to attach that rotor part to this rotor. You'll notice that when I did that, this whole thing shifted a bit and we'll deal with that soon. Now what we want is a bunch of blast door pieces to make this ramp extend out a few blocks and then we place some more blast door edges on. And that's going to be the first segment of our ramp. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. What we want is a rotor attached just as this rotor is to the edge of this blast door piece. And that's a bit difficult since when you try and place a rotor, it's always the rotor base that gets attached. It's not the rotor part that you can attach with, yet that's exactly what we want. So the way that I think is easiest to do this, and this isn't the way that I did it when I built this originally, but I've since thought of a much better way, is to do this. Place down an advanced rotor. Oh, we might need to move, remove those as well. Place down this advanced rotor here. Place another one attached to it because we're going to need that one as well. And then we remove the rotor part on that one. Place these blocks that we removed back in. Place a rotor part on here. And then we should be able to access that advanced rotor and tell it to attach. The way we can tell which advanced rotor it is that we need to use is by looking through this list. You can see that when I click on two, three, and five, this add rotor head button doesn't light up. But with that advanced rotor four, it does, which means that it'll have the attach button and it is now locked to this grid. We can now remove this scaffold that we added. And you can see now 
that we've got these two blocks added onto the end of this ramp. Then it's just a case of building some more blast door edges. And if you wanted to mirror this, I'll show you in a second how to do that. Again, build these out to the same size as the previous ones. And blast door edge. Now, if you want to mirror this, we're going to need to remove those same pieces that we removed on the other side to give us room to place that rotor. So again, same process as before. We bring this line of blocks down here, place in the advanced rotor, remove the, rem the rotor part, add the blast door pieces back in. And then on this blast door piece, we add an advanced rotor part. We then add in our other rotor, remove its part, place these back in, place the rotor part on there, and then we have to attach both of these rotors since neither of them are currently attached to those ramp pieces. So again, going through the advanced rotor list, we can see that this one, the button for add rotor head is highlighted so we can actually use it, and that means the attach button will allow us to attach that segment. And then this one as well, click attach. And now we can remove this scaffolding. Things will jiggle around a bit as you do this. And this process, despite me doing it in creative, does work in survival exactly the same. Well, I mean, you have to grind things, but it, the actual process is identical. Then you can add some little decorative pieces in here so that the rotors don't stick out like sore thumbs. And we have constructed our basic door. Now we have to get this thing working. And to do that, what I would recommend first doing is turning off the rotors on one side. If you turn off rotors and you have no braking torque set for them, they then just free spin. So this is the quickest way to get these to free spin. And because I've made these advanced rotors, I can go to each one, select control panel, and toggle it off. I can then go to the next one, control panel, and toggle it off. And there we go. All three on this side are now off. Now we need to decide what actions we need from these rotors. From this one, we need this segment of ramp to go from slightly further down, so probably 10 to 15 degrees downward, all the way up to vertical. So if we go into this advanced rotor here and go to our control panel, we'll see that it's currently at zero degrees. And from previous experience with rotors, I know that when you're facing onto a rotor, clockwise is in the positive direction. So since I'm now behind it, anti-clockwise is positive. Moving this ramp downward toward the ground will increase the angle of the rotor. So what we want is to increase the upper limit, let's say to 15 degrees. The lower limit, we're going to want at minus 90, and that's because it's going to go 90 degrees clockwise from our current position to go straight up. So our lower limit will be minus 90. To test this out, we can set our velocity to 0.5, so it's nice and slow and things don't break, too easily anyway. And you'll see we're now at 15 degrees. And at 15 degrees, we're not too bad. We're a little bit off the ground for where I've set this up, but this thing's fairly high, so that's probably okay. We can get it down lower if we need to once we go to test this thing properly. Then, with this same rotor, you can click reverse, and hopefully it has the strength to flip this all the way up, which it looks like it does. And it should get to a perfectly vertical position which will be the closed position for this ramp. And also what happens to be an easier starting condition for figuring out what we need to do with these two rotors. These two rotors each need to bring this segment of ramp down by 90 degrees. So this first one will turn the ramp to this horizontal, and then the second one will bring it down square. The reason we use two rotors for this, as opposed to a single rotor, is that a single rotor will need to have a segment brought out this way. So from the rotor, you'd need to bring it out this way so that you could get it to go from perfectly straight down to collapsed, which will actually make the whole construction much larger. So the double rotor 
makes this thing more compact, or at least as best as I can figure out how to do it. So this first rotor, it needs to bring everything to horizontal, but it also needs to at maximum remain at its current angle. So it says current angle is 90 degrees and we're behind it and we need it to move anti-clockwise, which is positive 90 degrees further. So its lower limit is going to be 90 and its upper limit is going to be 180. Let's just test to see if I'm right. 0.5. I am very wrong. Oh dear. Bad. Bad wrong. Now why am I wrong with this? The reason I'm wrong with this is because I'm thinking about the rotor remaining static. In this instance, the rotor doesn't remain static. The rotor is the part that actually moves. The rotor part remains static. So the direction this rotor is actually turning is clockwise from my current position. So what we actually want is an upper limit of 90 and a lower limit of zero. And you'll see now, this is going to bring this down to the position we need. Now we need to spin this down a further 90 degrees to bring the second part of the ramp neatly into position. This instance it's nice and simple again because the rotor remains static while the part turns. So the part needs to turn anti-clockwise 90 degrees. So this thing needs to go from 0 to 90. So velocity 0.5. And now it closes down. And now that we've got all of these rotors set up, what you can do is go into your control panel, select all of your rotors, and let's just call them ramp rotors. So we've got a group, type that in the group, click save. Then we can use something like a button panel to control this ramp. If we right click on this button, go to groups, go to ramp rotors and click reverse. Then when we left click on this button, those rotors are going to reverse and this ramp is going to deploy. And you can see that this is working exactly as intended. So there we have it. We have built a deployable ramp system that works quite reliably for a small vehicle to get onto a large one. Let's just test it out to make sure that it can actually work. You can see here that with it set this high and with the ramp as short as I've built it, this is going to be quite a steep entry to this ramp and a lot of vehicles probably won't be able to do that, but this one has plenty of power, so we can get up the ramp, through the airtight hangar doors, and safely inside our hangar or inside the hangar of our vehicle. So there you have it. Now you can build deployable ramps like this all nice and neatly yourself. There is one other thing I should probably point out, which is, we should really adjust the offset of these two rotors because right now both of these rotors are trying to push this thing into the middle. They're kind of squeezing it in, which if you look from above, uh, it's not particularly visible, but it is slightly askew. So because these are advanced rotors, I know that to get this nice and neatly aligned, I've changed the displacement on both of these rotors to minus 0.2 or minus 20 centimeters. You can see if I control click on this thing to get up the command for typing in our values, you can see it's minus 0.2. And that should give us a nice and slightly less wobbly movement of this rotor ramp. As you can see now, it's a fair bit neater. It's not moving around, it's not shaking around like it was before. The shaking that you saw was because we were effectively creating everybody's favorite being of Clang by squeezing tight against those blast door pieces. If you found that some of what I covered today was done a little too quickly, I'd strongly suggest you going to some of my earlier tutorials where I covered things about rotors in a bit more detail. This is more of an advanced tutorial looking at how you can apply some of that stuff related to rotors without going through all of the nitty gritty along the way. I'm planning on doing a few more tutorials like this, nice short ones that just cover a specific topic without going into all of the backstory, but the intention would be that I've hopefully covered that backstory in previous tutorials. So if you've got any other topics like this one you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. And as always, there's plenty more to come, and I will see you then.